Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay, we here? Good morning. It's David Rizzo from Rogers Gardens, and today we're gonna we're gonna do August in the garden. So this is like a checklist of all the things you should be doing right now. And the one thing I guess with August that's that's a big point to make is as we go more into this month and even closer to September, we start getting hotter. So that's one thing. Pay close attention to the watering and I'll talk about mulching. And then I'll, I'll answer all your questions last. So if you guys have any questions about the stuff I'm talking about, save your questions for last and then we'll get to them, okay? So this time of year, it really starts to go away from um, the, the cooler, like we had a pretty cool early summer, but now that we're really into late summer, we're getting more of the thunderstorms, more monsoonal flow, higher humidity. So we're starting to bump up a little bit. I'm out on the border of Santa Ana and Tustin and we're gonna start going into the high 80s, 90s. So I have to really watch my watering and then watch you know how much I'm watering. But look at how, how your evaporation or your 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 evaporation is going to be a lot higher so that's where mulching comes in but right now i'm going to go through the plants i'm going to talk about fertilizing them i'm going to talk about problem problems with them and so let's go uh, first so first thing is all your annuals so right now you're still plant you're you're going to be planting still all your summer annuals the zinnias are coming in really good so i got some good um good color packs of zinnias so the zinnias are coming in they're planting right now the flocks are coming in um the dianthus are starting to come in that are really looking good the sweet williams um and one of my favorites that i really like i love these gomfrinas now these gomfrinas the taller ones like this can be almost a perennial but you could still treat them as an annual so the gomfrinas are coming in good um, and now for a lot of your shade stuff, you're going to be doing your impatience and your, I still take the New Guinea impatience and I use them as an annual, you know, even though they're perennial, I use them as an annual, uh, coleus, coleus, another shade annual, you know, more for the summer, great foliage textures. Um, another one that I like to use a lot in summer are vincas. So another thing that I do a lot is when we're going away from like the marigolds and the petunias, cause it's going to start getting too hot do vinca vincas look like impatience but they'll take a lot more um, heat a lot more sun uh, with vinca you just want to make sure that your soil drains good and you don't overwater and that's a crucial thing with vinca they look like an impatient but they don't want to be as wet and impatient so and with these as we get hotter you're gonna have to water them more and when you're watering them more you might have to feed them a little bit more I just take um, I always do the all-purpose you know um, this is just the all-purpose down to earth. Um, this is a good one. I can even use rose fertilizer on the annuals. It really doesn't matter as long as it has a little bit of nitrogen, which is your first number. So plant all those annuals, get those annuals going, get them in the ground, uh, water them really good, and just look at the areas too and pay attention. Is it a lot of sun? Is it more shade? So the sun ones like about six to eight hours of full sun. The shade ones want two, three hours of morning sun. So that's important. To look at too um, with those so that's where all the the annuals um now we, we really go into the one thing i love about when it's hot all your perennials so now it's your perennial this is perennial season so if you want to put in any any perennials i'm going to talk about geraniums first and then i'll go through all but i love perennials because perennials are really they're plants that will that will last more than a year they're short-lived perennials there's long-lived perennials they might last a year, they might last three years, they might last five years, it depends on the plant. But um, the geraniums, you can still plant all your geraniums right now. You got your ivy geraniums, you got your zonals. The biggest difference between this, these two, ivies are more of a trailing geranium, so they're gonna be more of a low trailing plant, where zonals are gonna be more of a bush that might be two to three feet tall, three feet wide. And um, so definitely with the, the geraniums are good to plant right now. One thing that you got to watch for them is if you start to see the flowers being eaten, they get tobacco budworms really easy. So if they start to really get the budworms, there's, a, there's an organic spray that I use. Oh, let's see, let's get it. It's called Spinosad. Spinosad works good for a lot of your caterpillars, but definitely with your tobacco, your geranium budworms, they're going to be bad. So... And then even like if you can look, 
around here. When the flower is done, I take this hole, I reach in and I pop that whole spike off. And that way these, the new growth down here will shoot and then I'll get flowers quicker. And so that's one thing when they're done, keep pinching them and deadheading them. That way they keep reblooming and fertilizing them. Um, again, I always use the rose fertilizer or the all purpose. I pretty much use that on everything. Perennial, roses, vines, anything that's blooming, it's gonna be the down to earth rose food or it's gonna be the down to earth all purpose. Um, and so yeah, so geraniums in right now and then, and then we go into my all my favorites. I love these salvias. This is a dwarf salvia off of Mystic Spires called Misty's. They'll bloom all summer long. They love the heat. We have little six inch ones. I have four inch ones. So I love those. Um, let me get in here and, and get into the, the nitty gritty, I call it, of, of plants. Um, this is closer to a Cal native, but I still plant it. It's one of your uh, Margarita Bot Penstemons. That's a good short penstemon. Hummingbirds love it. Little border plants like the sea thrips, armerias. These will bloom, great for a rose garden. I love Nemesias too. The little Nemesias are great. They're a little perennial that will get about 10 to 12 inches tall. You have Chocolate Cosmos over here. Let me get to this. So Chocolate Cosmos, uh, they're really good. You gotta trim them back and sometimes they're pretty short lived. Um, I love the Agastaches though. Yeah, these are Agastaches, the Hummingbird Mint. The hummingbirds love this plant and it doesn't get really big foot foot and a half so great to put in the agastaches um you even have we're starting to see the santa barbara daisies these are good as a ground cover they can sort of get out of control but i i like plants that really grow naturally and do get out of control so so i like them because the flower comes out pinkish color and then it fades to a white, but they can be a good ground cover and sort of take over areas if you want to have a natural garden. These Coreopsis, um, the Coreopsis, I'm gonna have to turn my radio off. My radio's on, sorry. <laughs> so let me turn my radio off. But anyway, with the Coreopsis, they're good to do right now. Hardy perennial, they'll bloom all summer long. This variety is called Presto Gold. So those are really good. Um, I love the Garas. The garas come in as such a nice plant this time of year. You have the pink garas, and they'll get about three feet by three feet. So love the garas. There's a white down here too that I put in. This is the white, but uh, you gotta watch them for the caterpillars a little bit. They'll, they will get attacked in late summer by a hornworm. If they do, um, just take your spinrus out and spray about once a month. But one thing I will tell you guys with spraying, this is a big thing with me. I only will spray when I see the damage, you know, because I know some people will spray, 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 but I, I've been growing organically for about 30 years. I spray when I see them. So if I see aphids, I'll use an organic soap. If I see caterpillars, but I don't really spray until I see the damage or until I see the evidence. Um, you got galardias. I'm gonna set the scar down. Galardias come off of a, a wildflower called um, um, the um, the Godishas, but the Galardias are great. They'll bloom all summer long. They love the heat. They love a lot of that, like those hot areas. You can grow them in the desert too. You have more salvias too. This is Skyscraper, which is a good variety. You got some of the Hummingbird Sage. Um, and then even the little, I brought in some of the little Kufias, little cigar plants. The hummingbirds love these. These are really good hummingbird plants right here. One thing that, that you're always looking for that hummingbirds like is they like a really long, a narrow flower where the nectar sits in the back of that flower. That's what they're really gonna key in on when they're really looking for food. And so more perennials that I like. I love the pentas. So pentas are a good one to use through the summers. Pentas can take into the hundreds. These plants can take a lot of heat. So good for growing in the summer. Um, if you got containers, let's talk a little bit about some of the perennials that are good for containers. Like here you have, let me, I, I got so many plants on here, I don't want to knock them all off the counter. Um, but you have like these verbenas, like they call them sand verbenas. You can put these in the ground or in containers. There's the purple and the lavender. Love using these. The scaviolas are great for containers. Uh, they take a lot of extra water, so if you put them in the ground, you got to make sure they get water. 
Um, even these sweet ornamental sweet potatoes, let's see if I can grab the other one. It's, it's in here somewhere. Yeah, here you go. Um, these sweet potatoes are good for partial sun. Oh, I grabbed the, I grabbed the salvia. So you have the bronze and the light, the light chartreuse color. You do have to watch them for the caterpillars and they, uh, but they they, they will grow so long and take off so quick. So those are good. Um, you have more agastaches, another one of my favorites. This is called Morello, the more of the pinky color. Um, I love these summer snapdragons too. So if you're doing more color in your garden and around your roses, you can do these angelonias. I love the summer snapdragons. You can mix them with the pentas. So all these take the same amount of water. And so they want really good, good soakings. And that's important for perennials is not so much to water. I, I don't like to water anything every day. I always like to soak stuff, let it go for two, three days. Soak stuff, let it go. And then as it gets established, I might even back the water off a little bit more. But when it's, think of it when it's newer, plants don't have a lot of roots yet. Even when you slip them out of the container, their roots are still pretty new. So they don't have a big root system yet. So you got to get them um, enough water to get them to root. And then they're they're more drought tolerant. Like even with some of the natives, they're drought tolerant with age, not right away. So that's one thing. And I brought up one of the really big leaf, um, uh, the the lambs ear. I love the lambs ear. This is Helen von Stein. This is a huge lambs ear. So if you're looking for more gray or soft texture in your garden, I love the lambs ear. So lambs ears are really really cool. So that's some of the perennials. Um, so far but there's so much more i mean we're just really like starting to go into perennial season we got the yarrow we got more pensamins we got more salvias so that's your your perennials for right now but there's so many more that i didn't even bring up um oh here's another good one that i like um around the roses this is one of my favorite english geraniums this is a cranesville geranium called roseanne i love roseannes because roseannes will bloom all the way through summer into fall if they slow down and, and later into fall, I cut them back, but I love this. This is a true geranium. So this isn't a pelargonium. This is your English or your, your Cranesville. So love this variety. So pick up on the Roseannes if you have a rose garden, because I love using them. They're so sturdy. And so that's a good one. Um, so that's with the perennials and all that stuff. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about some of the vegetables and some of the herbs. There's so many things to plant right now in the vegetable garden everybody's like oh it's going into summer and we're done no you can start putting in your fall tomatoes the biggest difference between fall tomatoes and regular season varieties are the time they take to mature so like right now i'm not doing a lot of the big late heirlooms so you won't see me doing mortgage lifter and and brandy wine and all those you know 85 90 day varieties i'm looking at fast varieties so there's a little Czechoslovakian heirloom called Stupice. That's a good little red, little potato leaf red. That one's about a 60 to 65 day. Um, one of my favorite tomatoes for making salsa, Legend. So we, I don't think we got that many of these, but if you can find Legend in any of the, the nurseries too, I love this variety. It's a really good quick tomato. It doesn't get that big, but you get these medium sized red. So really good for salsa. Um, you have any of the cherries too. Like this is one of my favorite little grape cherry tomatoes called chocolate sprinkles. I'm growing this one this year and I love the flavor of it. A little stripy bronze variety. Um, this is an Italian variety called Consoluto Genovesei. This is, they consider it a winter variety, but to me it's a little later. So if you do put it in, you wanna get a lot of these winter tomato varieties or these quick varieties I like to get them in in August. So September, October, you're getting later. So if you want to get a crop before we, we go into winter, look for them now, look for them in August. So don't, and um, you can do with like switching gears, uh, peppers you can put in right now. So I got serranos, so all the hot peppers, serranos, jalapenos, all those can go in the ground. I brought more up. This is another serrano, good hot pepper. Um, and uh, other vegetables you can still do you can do like your okra right now all your pumpkins and your squash now if you can't find plants I'm looking at the seeds you know I know a lot of people are sort of scared of doing seeds 
but you know all the squashes like some of the the gray squash and this is butternut right here you can do um the scallop and the spaghetti so these will germinate in seven days and they'll probably start producing in 50 to 60 so very fast you do got to watch them for mildew a little bit on the coast but put them in a nice hot sunny location and even you have your green um, squash your regular zucchini now the biggest difference right now you don't have to start these in containers direct sow them right where you're going to plant them so put two three seeds in one area and let them grow and you can do that with watermelons and cantaloupe uh, pumpkins you can still do some of the jack-o-lantern types this is a mixture of some of the pumpkins that get like 10 to 18 pounds 105 days so if you want pumpkins don't wait put them in now because you got august september and october you got three months so they're 105 and so you should be fine you should be harvesting them and using them by halloween but don't wait till september put them in right now um some other seeds that i brought up um not to get off track too much but sunflowers you can do right now so sunflowers are another one um you can buy all the sweet peas right now but don't put them in until september october so sweet peas are coming in right now in the seeds and um so going back to some of the vegetables so we're back into the veggies so um, strawberries, you can still plant strawberries right now. This is a nice color pack. I don't see the label on this, but with strawberries, I'm always going after the everbearing, either the, the Chandler or the Seascape. Those are two good everbearing varieties. So definitely look at those. Um, if you have perennial straw, like if you have your strawberries in the ground, if they're starting to show the runners, cut off these runners. They're gonna take a lot of energy away from the main plant. So they're, gonna, they're wanting to produce more plants. Now, if the plants are three years in the ground, you can let the runners go. But what I do is I take my little, I love these little Felcos. They're like 310 Felcos. They're little, uh, uh, like more flourish years. So what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll just take all these suckers off and some of this old growth right to the crown. And see, then I'll do that. I'll check and do that every two, three weeks. And the reason why I want to do that, especially on young plants, I want this plant to build more energy on the crown. I don't want it to produce a lot of energy trying to make babies. And so that's one thing is get it in there and water them. You can actually fertilize them a little bit if they look rough, um, but they should still keep on going. Sort of clean them up and get ready for fall because usually they'll start producing good in fall. And so that's with the veggies. Um, herbs right now you can do all your herbs your mint this is a really good one this is uh, yerba buena this is a really good mint mint I don't plant in the ground I put it in containers and good potting soil full sun you'll have to water them a lot but good variety um, I love lemon verbena these are two of my favorites for green peas and uh, if, you, if you make matcha definitely the two that you want to use for that uh, you can do tarragon right now tarragon's good um, the African blue uh, basil is good right now. Cilantro, it's going to get hot for it, so it's going to bolt quicker. So cilantro might not last as long right now. And um, I got a, I got a, um, a shameless plug. So if you guys want any basil, these are basils I grow at home. So <laughs> if you want any of the nice sweet basil, and this is what I use on my pizzas and for making pesto. This is a really good variety of sweet basil. So what I always do to harvest, I pinch the top and I keep pinching them. So the thing with sweet basil is you don't want to let them flower because you want them to keep on producing their growth. So I grew these at home and I um I I grew these and, and then I sold I sold four flats to Rogers Garden. So we're here, we have them. So if you want good basil, now is the time for basil. Um, and so that's good. So all your herbs and um, if you're growing parsley, um, put them in a little bit of shade. You know, parsley sometimes don't like the heat we're going into. So if I plant parsley right now, um, put them in shade. Don't put them in so much heat. So that's with the veggies and the herbs. And um, you know, even though nobody talks about it, as we're going really hot, I do mulch my vegetables a lot, my herbs. I'll take either the shredded cedar bark or the chipped redwood. I do mulch because I want to retain the water, keep the soil cool, and that's important. So I do mulch. Um, so that's with the veggies and the herbs. Uh, talking a little bit about your um, natives. So here we go into the natives. Um, you can still plant a lot of natives right now. You know, um, some of them do like um, 
more winter planting than summer, but there's a few of them varieties that I do plant right now, like the buckwheats. Um, uh, this is one of the California uh, fuchsias, and so the epilobiums. And then you have the Cleveland sage. The, um, this is um, alpine, so uh, salvia clevelandii. The buckwheats you can put in right now. This is, um, this is rubrins, so rubescens, I mean, and then there's another buckwheat. So these are really good um, food for some of the butterflies, some of the native butterflies. So these aren't host plants, which the monarch, which is right here, that would be a host plant for their larvae. So the, mo the monarchs will lay their eggs on the milkweed, and then they'll eat the milkweed. These are more food for all the butterflies, from the, the sulfur butterflies to the monarchs, to all of them. So, Buckwheats are good right now. Um, another thing with natives too, most natives actually will slow down in, in summer and almost go like summer dormancy. So make sure you're not watering them too much. Cause I know I see a lot of people, if they have mallow and if they have some of the, the other varieties of, of natives from some of the um, Matilla poppies, watch your water on them because some people think, oh, it's summer. I got to really up my water, but not with the natives. You still want to keep the natives on the dry side. You can mulch them and water them every three, four weeks, but don't water them too much because you'll rot them out. I see a, a big problem with that with the natives. And another thing I always will talk about with the, um, the monarchs. A lot of people have been coming in because they're seeing the yellow oleander aphids on their new growth. Now, since this is a hose plant for the monarchs, I don't want to spray anything. So what I'll do is I'll take my fingers and see the aphids and I'll literally just rub them off. Just sort of squash them and just rub them off, you know, because I don't want to use anything that's going to hurt the monarch. So these aphids, again, I'll just go along the, the stem and just rub them off and that's how I control them. Because they can sort of damage the new growth over time because they're going after that nice tender growth, but I just rub them right off. And the monarchs, um, or the milkweed, um, keep planting them right now. What I like to do is I like to plant them in groupings of three or four. So uh, plant one here, plant it a foot away, foot away, and just sort of do little groupings of them. But that's a good plant to use. And this is the narrow leaf right here. So this is a Slepsius fascicularis. This is my favorite one to grow. That's the California native. There's a few other ones, but I do like this one because this is the one that has such a widespread distribution of where it's native to. So I like that that one. That one's a good one. So that's it with the natives. Um, some of them you'll wait till winter to plant them. There's a lot of the salvias you can plant right now in the buckwheats and even the butylon uh, palmry eyes. But some of them like the Matilda hop poppies and some of the other varieties, you really want to do them more in the winter time. So uh, coinciding with the winter rains, okay? So that's it with the natives. And now we're gonna go through my favorite, the fruit trees. And so fruit trees right now, I'll talk about planting them. I didn't bring up any peaches or plums, but I'll talk a little bit about those too. So now it's time to start putting in all your subtropicals. And so like this is a really good avocado called lamb hoss. So I'm planting lamb hoss right now. Um, I'm doing all my citrus. I got a really nice, I'll hold it up for you. I got a really nice um, selection of the Meyer lemons right now, and these are semi-dwarfs, so they could get six to eight, but this is one of my favorite sweet lemons. So love the, love the sweet lemon, the Meyer. Um, we're getting in a lot of the passion fruit. So purple possum, Frederick. So this is your, your passion, the passion flora edulis. So this is your fruiting, um, passion vine and the one thing with the fruit when you harvest it you got to let them almost dry on the vine and then you take them out and let them dry more because then a little bit of that juice in the pudding will be at the bottom of the fruit so when you cut it open you'll scoop a little bit of that out so that the passion vines are really good um i didn't i didn't bring up any peaches plums nectarines but you can plant you can plant stone fruits right now a lot of people say it's too late to plant them if you can find nice plants like we had some nice 15 gallons you can put them in right now. You just have to make sure they get adequate water. Uh, mulching. Nobody ever talks about mulching fruit trees. I mulch fruit trees like mad, especially if you're in an area that hits 85, 90, throw down a good mulch. The, sh the shredded cedar, the shredded redwood, the chipped redwood, I love that. You just gotta make sure you water through the mulch. And the important thing with mulch is keep the mulch away from the trunk. Don't have that mulch right against the trunk because you don't want to create rotting, so that's important. Uh, the, the um, 
figs are really good to plant right now. So I brought a little dwarf fig up called, um, this is um, blackjack. And blackjack is a dwarf mission fig. And figs are really good. With figs though, you really do gotta watch out to make sure that the, um, they get a lot of water. Figs want a lot of water to develop their fruit. And you do gotta watch them for the birds. If the birds get bad, um, net them off really good and make sure they don't get out to the fruit. And so that's um, blueberries. We got in a small shipment of blueberries. Um, blueberries, if you put them in right now, um, raised beds, containers, put them in a little bit of shade. It's gonna get really hot for them and always feed them with an acid fertilizer. And one thing to touch on too, that's important for your citrus and your avocados is citrus food. You know, this has your trace minerals in it. So I'm not feeding them that much right now because a lot of them, if they're fruiting, but if they're young, and they're less than three years old every two months every two months i'll use this food has your trace minerals in it so it has the nitrogen the phosphorus and the potassium but then it has your iron zinc and magnesium that's important for your your um your citrus and your avocados all those subtropicals want more minerals well, when you get into peach plum nectarines you can use the same thing you're using on your tomatoes just a four six two so i can use this tomatoes vegetables peppers I can use this on figs and plums and peaches and apricots and nectarines. So that one is a good one because um, those stone fruits don't need the trace as much trace minerals as your as your avocados and your subtropicals. So that's important with that. Another thing that I didn't bring up any of the the the, uh, the um, apricots and some of the peaches when they're done producing for this year. If you get the long whips. It's a good time to light trim them back right now because then they'll shoot new growth by fall and then you'll keep the trees down, especially on apricots. Um, so that's important with, with them, even I didn't bring any of them up. So light trim down some of them when they're only when they're done fruiting, okay? And so that's it with, with really the fruit, the fruit bearing plants. Um, it's really too hot. I really don't get into uh, planting like some of your berry, your other berries right now, like um, I do plant grapes right now though, but like into raspberries and blackberries and those, I wait till spring, you know, it, it gets too hot for them. It's hard to establish them right now. So wait for those in spring. Uh, but definitely with your grapes, you can go through and you can, you can actually uh, feed your grapes right now, make sure they're getting enough water and um, just, they should be producing a lot right now. So usually late July into August, you should get, be getting some and watch the birds too for them. Um, even with your blueberries, last month was probably a heavier um, production of the blueberries. Usually it's July, but sometimes they carry into August. Um, so that. And then one more thing with blueberries that even though this one doesn't have it, when you have a cane that's produced this year, cut that cane back to where you see new growth because that cane will just look like dead sticks. So that's another thing with late summer pruning with blueberries only prune the ones that have already fruited this year so then they shoot new growth off of that next year and like i was saying keep them acidic i'll use coffee grounds cotton seed meal or the acid plant uh, fertilizer on these especially to keep that ph down our ph in our water is a little higher so it will become more alkaline where the blueberries want that lower ph so once in a while it's good put a little cotton seed meal, a little coffee grounds, drop that pH back down. So that's it with the fruit trees. So cover that. Um, and then um, now's the time to really do, or we're switching gears into more of the tropicals. And so I'm just starting to get a lot of tropical plants right now. So your plumerias are starting to come in. Um, so plumerias, they're coming in. They got the flower spikes on them and they'll be blooming probably in the next few weeks. Uh, but yeah, with, with the plumerias, again, treat them like a tropical cactus. You always want to make sure you fertilize them. I do like some of the Grow More fertilizers, um, some of like the 42626 for the higher phosphorus. But when this spike is growing, you never prune this spike off because it might produce off the same spike for four to six years. So when that spike drops off, then it's fine. But with these spikes, don't cut these off because they'll keep on flowering off them for a number of years. And uh, watch your watering on them too. A lot of people rot them out because plumerias hold a lot of water in their trunks. So when you water, you want to water them good and then let them dry out between waters. Don't keep them too wet. You can see the mix. They have them in like sort of a, a really high 
cactus mix with a lot of perlite in it. They want that drainage. So they love the full sun and the heat, but they don't want to be um, too much water. This is a little dwarf variety that's called Dragon of Tears. So it's more of like what they call a candy stripe type. So plumerias right now, definitely plant them. You can feed them. Um, we're going into hibiscus season. So we're starting to get some nice five gallon hibiscus from Monrovia. So these are, um, these are, this really isn't a dwarf right here. This one will get about four to six feet tall and about four to six feet wide. Um, great to plant right now, love the heat. Um, with hibiscus, if you have them, keep fertilizing them and watch them for whitefly because they, they really can get whitefly really easy. If you start to see whitefly on them, I like to use one of the light oil sprays. I like takedown. So takedown is a good one, but when you're using the light like oil sprays, don't spray it during the heat of the day. Wait until it cools off in the app in the late afternoon or evening to spray. So watch for white fly, use takedown. That's a good one for that. Um, so there's gonna be more tropicals coming in as we go more into summer. Like I have Mandevillas coming in. There's gonna be different vines and uh, there's gonna be a lot of other stuff coming in. I got princess flowers that will be coming in, Tupacina. So a lot more of those summer tropicals that as we get hotter that you can put in right now. Gardenias are another one um, that I didn't bring up, but you got your first love that came in really nice from Rovia. You got mysteries, you have August beauties. So those are good. Fertilize them right now and just um, keep them growing. Keep them growing. And that's important for your tropicals. And so next thing on the list, I'm moving quick because we're almost done. How much time are we almost done? Yeah, five, 10 minutes. Okay, five minutes, 10 minutes. Okay, let's go on. We're talking about roses now. So roses are actually doing really good still into August. This is one of my favorite white varieties. It's a little hybrid tea called Pope John Paul II. Really fragrant. So this is a good one. Um, sometimes this time of year, Roses will start slowing down when it's hot, but you know, we haven't been really hot up to this point. We've been pretty mild. So they're looking pretty good, but I still will go through and, and trim them and clean them up and watch them though. There's a little fly larvae called rose slugs and a lot of people have been bringing them in lately. So it's a little fly larvae and it really eats the leaves. So I'm always watching for them. So if you see the leaves just looking like, looking like they've been getting eaten, it's not a caterpillar. So again, I'll use the, the spinosad. One thing I do with the spinosad, I'll get a quart spray bottle, about the same size as this uh, three-in-one spray. I'll put one tablespoon in that spray bottle, shake it up, and spray about every two, three weeks because this is the time of year that the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the little rose slugs are really gonna be out attacking the roses. And another thing too, if, if you get leaf miners on your citrus, again, spinosad, but what I do with the leaf miners is if they're attacking the citrus, I'll light trim that off. They're starting to show up in the nursery and I've been light pruning. So that's important uh, with, with controlling some of the late summer insects. So, and there's a new one that I, that actually is really fragrant and it's a nice little rose. This one's called Chantilly Cream. It's a little cream yellow and this thing is really fragrant. Yeah, really nice fragrance. Doesn't look like it's gonna get to be a very big rose, um, little, it's a little, um, is it a hybrid tea? Let's look. Oh yeah, it is hybrid tea. So Chantilly Cream, another neat one that I just grabbed that I've never seen before. And so, so with roses, you can light trim them back, clean them up a little bit and late this month and just fertilize them. And if you haven't done it yet, what I'll even do, I'll always put a little Epsom salt. So I'm still using the fertilizer. I don't know what I did with it, but um, I'm still using the down to earth rose food, but I will put a little Epsom salts in there to make sure that um, that I'm getting enough. Here's the rose fertilizer right here. This is the one I like using. Even though this has magnesium in it, I still will take some Epsom salts and put a little bit more around it. I tend to do that twice a year. I'll do it in early spring and sometimes midsummer or late summer. So, and when you're doing the Epsom salts, make sure that you water really good to break it down. So that's you know because. It is a salt and it will it will absorb a lot of water away from the plant. So water it in really good after you fertilize. And that's how these organics break down. Soak them good after you fertilize. And so that, um, I wanna talk a little bit about watering before we go. One of the things with watering, I know we're going into the heat, we're going into summer. I always, I, I know a lot of people always wanna water really light 
and really frequent. It's better with your plants to give them a good soaking, water them really thoroughly, and then let them gradually dry out. Where even with your sprinklers, I know a lot of people like to put their sprinklers on every day. I like to go a little longer and maybe go like twice a week. I don't like watering every day. And if you're hand watering, I do like these water breakers. They're by Dram. They're a thousand uh, little holes, or a thousand holes they call them. And um, this is a good one to put on your hose with the water shut off and it really is like a shower. So you can really soak them in. And even with my tomatoes, I don't like to water them as much because all my tomatoes are starting to ripen now and they're getting to set and I don't want them splitting. So that's another thing is, and I don't want the fruit really watery. So as we go into letting uh, fruits ripen, especially tomatoes, I'll start backing the water off and I might be trying to water barely once a week. So that's important because I don't want, because I had a brandy wine that was about a three pound brandy wine split on me. So you don't want all that water and start cracking the fruit. And then sometimes the, um, the fruit becomes more watered down and the sugars aren't as high. So now is the time as if you're getting ripening on your big late heirlooms, peel back the water and let them go more drier because they have enough water in the plant. They should be able to hold that water for about a week. So back the water off a little bit and then another thing that I will do mulching I will mulch and mulch and mulch and so I don't know if she can pan down I'll, I'm gonna go grab one of the bags and so I like taking the either this is the, the shredded cedar so I'll either use the shredded cedar this is a good one the water flows through this good because it's, it's shredded long so that's one thing I my favorite my two favorite mulches that I mulch a lot with I like the shredded cedar and I like the little chip. They sometimes call it mini mulch, walk on bark. It's made from little chips of redwood or cedar. You know, they could go either way. This is another good one to mulch really heavy with. And a lot of people, there's always been a, a big misconception about, oh, the, the wood mulches are gonna rob all the nitrogen out of your garden. If you're concerned about that and they really won't, just put a fertilizer down, put a compost down. I always will actually work in, one of my favorite composts this year has been, oh, I just ripped the bag. Let me see if I can hold this. This thing's pretty wet. I do like the Harvest Supreme right now because it's a really good high chicken manure compost. So I can work that in. Usually I don't use this because it's so high in chicken manure, but we haven't had a good rain so this has been the one to go to for amending my garden and heavily hold the water now for mulching on the surface i'll just use the malibu so the malibu is what i'm going to put on just mulching the surface and this is a good one to help retain water too the malibu compost but i'll always use the harvest supreme to work in maybe malibu on the surface mulching over that and so Yes, I think we're uh, finished for today. And so now is the time if you guys have any questions. So ask me anything that you want. And uh, yeah, now it's question time. Um, I got one question about lamb's ear. Is yeah. it good in full sun? Yeah, so she's asking with lamb's ear. And she's asking, is lamb's ear good for full sun? Lamb's ear loves full sun. Oh, I just grabbed it out of the pot. So this is the big one that I showed you earlier called Helen von Stein. Lamb's ear loves a lot of sun. You just gotta make sure it gets enough water. So definitely full sun, great around roses, great around perennial gardens, but um, consistent water. Um, what about late summer lemon tree pruning? Um, you know, I like she's asking about late summer lemon pruning. I usually don't like to prune citrus as much during this time of year because they're still producing new growth they could flower off that new growth my favorite time to prune most citrus is before they come out and flower the next year where i like january but i mean if you want you can always thin them out but the one thing with citrus let me grab one though and show you you can always you can always thin some of the growth out like and i can always go through here and thin it out but i don't want to i don't want to trim it back because it's still going to produce a lot of new growth this time of year and it might flower and fruit off that new growth so my, my favorite time for pruning citrus is January. And you gotta do it really quick because some of them will come out 
and they'll start putting on a lot of growth in February. So January is my favorite, but you can sort of clean them up and thin them out because if you let them get too bushy, sometimes they're known for getting white fly and woolly aphids into their interior growth. But yeah, for pruning heavily, January. For maybe thinning out and doing some cleanup, you could do it right now. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? That's good. Yeah, okay. Thank you, this is David from Rogers Gardens today. Thank you for joining me. And if you guys have any questions, come and see me in the nursery. And I'll, you know, any problems you have, um, bring them in too and always uh, come see me. Okay, thank you guys. Have a great day. Great day gardening, bye. <laughs>